J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with All's Fair in Love and War from the Gold Diggers of 1937. Most dinners can be divided into three courses. An appetizer to begin with, the main course to follow, and finally, the dessert. A perfect dinner is perfect all the way through, but there should always be an extra touch of perfection at the end. So never risk serving a dessert that has a chance to be disappointing. Serve Jell-O. Jell-O never fails to make friends with everybody at the table. It looks good, and it tastes even better with its wonderful true fruit flavor. Jell-O flavors, each and every one of them, come from fresh, ripe fruit. That's why Jell-O is so rich and delicious. But remember that Jell-O is the only gelatin dessert that brings you that grand, extra-rich fruit flavor. So when you want Jell-O, be sure you get the real thing. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the man who every week spreads a little joy, a little cheer, a little sunshine, Jack Pollyanna Benny. <laughs> hey, Jack. Jack. Mary, Mary, where's Jack? Uh, hasn't he shown up yet? No. Gee, he got more applause than if he were here. He ought to stay away every week. I, I can't understand it. It isn't like him to be late for a broadcast. Well, I'm not surprised. You know, Jack feels pretty bad about the way Phil Harris and the rest of us have been treating him. I'll bet he won't show up at all tonight. But we were only kidding. Well, you know how sensitive Jack is. See, all you have to do is slap him in the face and he gets all upset. <laughs> well, I I'm sorry about the whole thing. Uh, oh, Phil, uh, Jack's late tonight. Who cares? We can get along without him. Well, uh, I don't know. I think... Hello, we... fellas. Hi, you, Mary. Hello. Say, Kenny, we're in a fine fix. Jack isn't here tonight. Jack who? <laughs> Uh, Jack Benny, remember him? Oh, you mean that cowboy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to call up Jack's house and see if he's there. This foolishness has gone too far. Number, please. Uh, operator, uh, get me granite 3414, please. Oh, him. Just a moment, please. <laughs> Hello? On to Mr. Blenny, lazy did. I'd uh, like to speak to Jack Benny, please. Oh, no, Mr. Blenny, he don't like a British club. Well, I've got to talk to him. It's important. <laughs> oh, no, all right, all right. I talk to him. I talk to him. All right, all right. Oh, no, Mr. Blenny. Yes, Hong. Oh, no, no, no. Some boy, some boy, Hong, the cowley sing, the singer pao. Boy, young, ha, quit toy la, some boy, li. Oh, no, some boy, go to the kitchen to pot all this, some boy, li, song boy, la, boy, ma, song quido. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Jack. This is Don. The program started. Aren't you coming over? No, Don. I'm fed up with the whole thing. You don't need me. You fellas made that pretty clear last week. Oh, stop acting like a prima donna. Well, at least I'm acting. That's more than any of you fellas can say. <laughs> How was that, Hong? <laughs> you said it. <laughs> now, listen, Don. You guys were so smart and thought you could get along without me. Let's see what you can do. Uh, but we need a master of ceremonies. Well, what's the matter with that Prince Charming that leads the orchestra? You know, that sun-kicked swing man? <laughs> How was that, Hong? Ripping. <laughs> what? Uh, Don, let me talk to Jack. All right. Uh, hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. So nice of you to call. Yes, ain't it? <laughs> Well, what do you want? Stop acting like a fool and get over here. No, you're all so good. What do you want with me? Well, we need somebody to be the head of the program, and you're a swell head. <laughs> no, I am, eh? See how comical you are? You don't need me there. Oh, Mary, let me talk to him, will you? Why? 
I can handle him better than anybody. Go ahead. Hello? Hello, Kenny. Who is this? <laughs> Who is this? It's Mussolini. Well, put Jack on. I want to talk to him. <laughs> Listen, Kenny, this is Jack. This is Jack Benny. Oh, let me talk to him, Kenny. Hey, Jack, you want to talk to Phil? No, you talk to him, Hong. Hello, Jack. Oh, Jack, he know what to talk. Oh, yeah, put him on the phone. Oh, Tom, what is it? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Pull on you, goodbye. What are you laughing at? Hong, hung up. <laughs> Well, it looks like there'll be no Jack Benny tonight. Uh, what are we going to do? Well, I can take charge. I've been a master of ceremonies before. You have? Uh, what do you think about it, Mary? Well, you know the old saying, when the cat's away, the rat will take his place. <laughs> <laughs> Say, that's good. Don, introduce my next number, and right after that, I'll go to town. All right. The next number will be played by Phil Harris and his orchestra and comes to you through the courtesy of Jell-O, the fastest-selling gelatin dessert in the world with its extra-rich fresh fruit flavor. And furthermore, be sure to look for the big winner of the box. It's not a genuine without it. Frost on the Moon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you our new Master of Ceremonies, everybody's favorite, Phil Harris. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is smiling Phil Harris talking, full of pep, happy as a lark and raring to go. Yes, sir. Well, Phil, you look pretty snappy today. Is that a new tie you're wearing? It sure is. Not yet, fellas. <laughs> Gee, what a versatile officer. They laugh and play. Quiet, Mary. You know where I got this tie, Don? No, where? Phil? Around my neck. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Nothing, but it was loud. <laughs> Say, Phil. What? Why don't you pick on jokes your own age? Well, you heard him scream, didn't you? At least I don't have to fight for my laughs like Jack does. Mm, that joke's old enough to fight for itself. <laughs> Mary. Please. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our feature attraction this evening, we're going to... Come in. Why, my God. God. This is a surprise. Hello. Oh, so... <laughs> so you've decided to come back, right? No, I'm just looking for my hat. I left it here last Sunday. Uh, what kind of a hat was it? It was a gray fedora with a black band. You see it? You got it on your head. Oh. I knew it was here someplace. <laughs> Well, so long. So long. Hmm. Is there any mail for me, Mary? No. Well, oh, I got my hat, didn't I? Yes. Hmm. Any mail come in since I asked for my hat? <laughs> no. No, and no hat came in since you asked for your mail. Well, hmm. Goodbye. 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 
Well, I'll stay on one condition. <laughs> and that is that you all behave yourself and realize that I'm the head of this program. And you'll do as I say. Now, is that agreeable? Yes. Traitor. <laughs> well, do you want me here or not? Sure, Jack. Hang up your mail and stay a while. <laughs> Don't be funny. Well, I might as well get started. Hello again. This is smiling Jack Benny taking over the reign. <laughs> With the following understanding. A, no tardiness. B, no wise crack. C, no phone calls for anybody on this program including that certain party whose first initial of his last name is Phil Harris. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, our tenor, Kenny Baker, will inaugurate the new regime by singing... Hmm, it's starting already. Answer that phone, Mary, and it better be business. Hello? Yes? Oh, hello. It's Carol Lombard, Jack. Hmm, well, tell her to call Phil at home, not here. She wants to talk to you, Jack. Oh, well, she probably put the call in before I made the rule. <laughs> I'll take it, Mary. Hello? Oh, hello, Miss Lombard. Yes. Yes, Carol. Oh, I'm feeling good, thanks. And you? That's fine. Uh, Mary, uh, Mary says you wanted to talk to me. No, I wasn't busy. I wasn't doing a thing, really. Uh, what is it you want, Carol? What? Can Phil get off early tonight? <laughs> no, goodbye! Gee, you must have hung up every phone in town. Well, of all the... You better sing now, Kitty. It's the last time I'll break my own rules. <laughs>
That was Kenny Baker singing Night and Day from The Gay Divorce, assisted by the orchestra. And a very good orchestra, too. In fact, they can play anything by request. Last week, they were requested to play hockey. <laughs> What's the matter with my orchestra? Oh, nothing, Phil, nothing. I heard they're very conscientious. I understand they go to the pawn shop every day and practice for hours. <laughs> Is that so? What about that violin of yours? Well, my violin was never in pawn. It was never in tune, either. <laughs> now, listen, Mary, who are you with, Phil or me? Me. Well, I'm glad that's settled. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Baker will sing... I the... sang already. Oh, see, I'm all mixed up tonight. Huh? Well, then, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is our feature attraction. We will continue with our Western drama, Buck Benny Rides Again. Or is his saddle red? <laughs> I will again play the part of Sheriff Buck Benny, as tough an hombre as ever talked back to an orchestra leader. A rip snorting, rorting, cavorting, Charles Lorton, and Edward Everett Horton. <laughs> you ain't heard Norton yet. <laughs> this? <laughs> this will go on immediately after the next number which will be played by a man who doesn't seem to worry much whether he's going to stay with this organization or not and his orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely from the Broadway production Red, Hot, and Blue. And now for the next installment of our serial, Buck Benny Rides Again. The opening scene is the office of the sheriff of Cactus County, where we find the sheriff and his deputies waiting for news as to the whereabouts of Cactus Face Elmer, the outlaw. Curtain. Music. I'm an old cow hand from the Rio Grande, from a late day boat. Ain't I'm a guy who never saw a cow. We never ought to see a cow that don't know how. And I sure ain't fixing to start it now. Hold it a second, boys. There's the phone. Hello? Yes, this is the sheriff's office. What's that, madam? You say there's a gang of rowdies disturbing the peace. We'll be over and put a stop to that immediately. Where do you live? Oh, right upstairs. <laughs> Boys, we gotta stop singing. Shucks. I feel like swearing myself. We never have any fun. Come in. Oh, Sheriff. Sure. Hello, dead eye. <laughs> really my secretary. <laughs> 
What's up? Somebody stole my Sunday pants. Well, you got another pair. What are you worrying about? My father was in them. Oh, gone it. He got away before I could think of an answer. <laughs> Boys, there's been too much shooting and thieving going around these here parts. Getting so those outlaws are taking everything that ain't nailed down. That's right, Sheriff. Well, what are we going to do? Nail everything down. <laughs> You got something there, deputy. <laughs> this sure is a tough town. Well, we ought to be getting some news about cactus phase pretty soon. I wonder what time it is. <laughs> hmm, didn't know it was that late. Someone at the door must be da Daisy, my fiance. That's Western for sweetheart, folks. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Daisy. Hello, horse face. <laughs> well, gal, a feed bag hanging from your ears wouldn't look exactly out of place. Shut your trash box. Every time you open it, you winnie. <laughs> winnie Pearl, what you doing in town, gal? Christmas shopping? Yeah, I just bought a case of brandy and some peanuts. The brandy's for Pappy. What's the peanuts for? To make him thirsty. <laughs> hmm. If he keeps it up, he'll be able to rent his nose for a stoplight. Say, Buck, have you got any news about our stolen cows? Nope, no clues as to the whereabouts of Cax Space Elmer. Got to speak to your Pappy about that. Where is he now? He's gone down to Ike Muller's saloon for the weekend. <laughs> Well, it's, it's nice there. There's the phone. It's either your pappy or Carol Lombard. Well, why don't you answer it? Don't have to. We got a snicker on that. <laughs> oh, well, here comes pappy now. He sure walks heavy, don't he? Uh, that's the fellow that's carrying him. <laughs> oh. Hello, Buck. Hello, Buck. Hmm, seeing double again, eh? <laughs> What are you so happy about, Frank? Well, Buck, I'm a celebrating because you got my cows back. Hold everything. I didn't get your cows back yet. Too late now. The celebration's underway. <laughs> I don't even know where Cactus Face Elmer is. You don't? Why, Ike Muller tells me that Cactus Face just walked into the gem theater to see a moving picture. He did? Yeah, and the sheriff of the next county's waiting outside the theater till you get there. The sheriff of the next county, eh? What's his name? Puddin' Tame. Ask me again and I'll tell you the same. <laughs> Hmm, one more crack like that, and I'll play Ring Around Your Eyes. -y. <laughs> well, now that we got Cactus Face cornered, I better rush right over there. Can we go with you, Buck? Nope, it might be dangerous. I'm a going alone. Where's my horse? You're sitting on him. Oh. <laughs> well, I better get going. I'm going to get Cactus Face this time, dead or alive. Goodbye, folks, and Merry Christmas. Buck Benny rides again. <laughs> Open the door, Frank. <laughs> Scene two, we now take you to the front of the Gem Theater, where we find Buck Benny just arriving. Whoa! <laughs> mm. <clears throat> Them four-wheel brakes sure are something. <laughs> hey, Buck! Hello, Ike. I hear the cactus face just walked into this theater. Yes, sir. Not more than two minutes ago. Hey, Buck, I want you to meet the representative of the law for the next county. This is Sheriff Andy Devine. Andy Devine. <laughs> hmm. Main Street sure is crowded tonight. <laughs> Sheriff, I'm sure glad to know you. Uh, glad to know you too, Buck. <laughs> You along. I'm starting on a new picture tomorrow. We better help me out on this case. It's nice the universe out on this case. <laughs> it was darn nice the universe out on this. <laughs> it was darn nice the Universal Studios will let you come over here and help me out on this case. Well, I can't stay with you long. I'm starting on a new picture tomorrow. <laughs> That's so. What's the name of it? Well, it's called The Road Back. Well, what you crying about? I ain't crying. That's the way I talk. <laughs> Well, by the way, gravel throat. <laughs> did you see, uh, did you see me in my latest picture, the big broadcast? Yep. How'd you like me in it? 
<laughs> well, reckon we done enough advertising about our pictures. <clears throat> Hold on, ain't nobody gonna say that Jell-O was the most tempting dessert in these here parts, and every day millions of cowboys keep eating it. Thanks, Andy. That was divine. <laughs> Now listen, Sheriff, I heard the cactus face Elmer's inside the theater. Yeah, that's right, and I'm hot on his trail. Now, what are you doing outside? Well, I saw the picture. <laughs> now we gotta get cactus face dead or alive. What's playing here, anyway? Uh, William S. Hart? Oh, Bill Hart, eh? Well, come along, I'll buy the tickets. We'll kill two birds with one stone. Stoop down, Andy, I'll get you in for half price. <laughs> All right, but I feel kind of silly. <laughs> two tickets, miss, one adult and one child. Here you are, Sonny. He's the child. <laughs> oh, well, tell him to trade that pipe in for a lollipop. <laughs> Come on, Andy. Hey, ain't she pretty? Come on, business before pretty. Tickets, please. Keep your stuff for bank night. Here you are. Mm. It's awfully dark in here. I wonder where the usher is. There he is up in front with a gun. That's William S. Hart. <laughs> Well, he can't find a seat either. Mm. Sure is dark. Oh, here's a couple of empty seats. Let's sit down. Sir? Oh, pardon me, lady. <laughs> Move over one seat, Andy. Why, lady, are you hissing the picture? No, I'm frying an egg. I've been in here for a month. <laughs> mm. Watch for him. Hey, Andy. Andy. My seat's moving. Well, that's funny. Mine's moving, too. It is. Mm -hmm. Oh, it. we're sitting on a couple of cows. Wait a minute. Are you Frank Carson's cows? No. no. <laughs> that's a lie. Come on, Sheriff. Cactus face must be right close by. Look, there he goes now. Out the side door. I did it! <laughs> He got me. He did? Are you hurt bad? Oh, Andy. Reckon I'm done. No, don't give up, Buck. You'll be all right. Oh. Oh, oh come on, Buck. Oh. Buck, say something. Oh, come on, Buck. Say something. Oh, this will be continued next Sunday night. <laughs> Was I killed? Will we get cactus face? Will Buck Benny ride again? Tune in next Sunday and find out. Oh, Playboy. Your mother made it, your grandmother made it, and today everybody still makes chocolate pudding. But there's a new way nowadays, an easier way to get those same delicious results. Use Jell-O chocolate pudding. For Jell-O chocolate pudding is smoother, creamier, more chocolatey. And it brings you that fine, rich, homemade flavor that makes all the difference in a chocolate pudding. Here's how easily it's made. Simply mix the contents of one package of Jell-O chocolate pudding with some milk in the top of your double boiler. In just about 10 minutes, the mixture will become thick and satin smooth. Take it off the fire then, and after it's cooled, serve in sherbet glasses. That's all you have to do to turn out a perfect chocolate pudding, the luscious, extra good kind that makes everybody hope it will be served again and again. One package of Jell-O chocolate pudding makes enough for six grand servings, and it sells for the same low price as Jell-O. Ask your grocer for Jell-O chocolate pudding. This is the last number of the 11th program in the new Jelly series. And on behalf of Jack Benny, who was shot, I want to thank me for being here tonight. <laughs> The lecture that I get a kick out of you is from the production Anything Goes. The Jell-O program originated at the NBC studios in Hollywood over the Red Network. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> KFI Los Angeles. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com. <laughs>